All right, you guys, we made it to the museum. Let's see what kind of cool stuff we can find in here. Using the new camera and the new microphone from Awesome Zeb. Look at that old chest, like you keep your stuff in there. Rocker box, butter churn, windmill, how come? Look at this guy. He means business. So this is the Orville Kelly Ridge, Lake Orville Kelly Ridge uh, Visitor Center. That's a cool museum. Since it's pouring down rain outside, I thought we would come check this out. Look at this thing for kids. <laughs> it's cute. You can sit in this chair and watch a video about the construction of the Orville Dam. Look at all these cool buttons you get. Fast. Who's that? Play video. It's stuck. Well, we didn't come here for videos. <laughs> Here's the Orville Dam. Trying to keep the shadows down, but oh look, they have a new Oroville Spillway Incident Board. Remember that, you guys, when the spillway broke? That was crazy. Look at this is now. I haven't been here in a while, but they have lots of cool like dioramas of how the dam was built. There's the dam over there. and They use tailings from the Feather River mining to make this earth-filled dam. Look at that, they had like a conveyor belt. The trains would, would come in, dump the rocks in there, and head out over the conveyor belt and start Filling up the dam. Cool. Fishing. Yeah, fishing. These kids look lost. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it's just like a, a globe of the earth with some weather going on. Trippy. This might be one of the coolest ones. Here, check this out. This is the power plant inside the dam. There's little buttons here. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that lit up. What do we got here? Hyatt Power Plant. So the power plant. I don't know. It's fancy, but it shows where the water's going, not where the power's going, so I'm confused. Anyway, this thing's pretty cool. It's the Hyatt power plant inside the Oroville Dam. Cute. Yeah, this mess. This is the building of the Hyatt power plant. I'm not sure if I have a video about that or not. 
I don't think I have an Oroville Dam one. So there's the fish hatchery. We've been there in a video. Because Orville Dam keeps salmon and steelhead trout from their spawning grounds, the Department of Water Resources built the Feather River Fish Hatchery. The hatchery helps fish begin their life cycle to ensure we will always have salmon and steelhead trout. The hatchery is like a nursery where new fish are born and grow until they are big enough to be placed into the river system. Salmon spend most of their lives in the ocean. In the fall, mature salmon return to their native rivers to spawn. Some of the fish swim hundreds of miles. Feather River salmon come all the way through the San Francisco Bay and up the Sacramento River. Salmon need special spawning grounds with clean, cool water flowing through just the right kind of gravel to make their nest and hatch their eggs. The female salmon digs a nest called a red to deposit her eggs. She will choose a male to fertilize her eggs. After they spawn, the male and female salmon die. Their bodies will actually help to feed their offspring when they hatch. Depending on the conditions, the young salmon will wiggle out of the red in 45 to 60 days. After spending several weeks in the river, the young fish will make their way to the ocean. Even under the best conditions, less than 30% of the eggs ever hatch, and only 1 in 10 salmon actually reaches the ocean to grow into adulthood. Under controlled conditions, like those in the hatchery, the survival rate is much higher. When you visit the hatchery, the first thing you see is a small dam that keeps the salmon from going any farther upstream. There's a platform to watch the salmon swim up the fish ladder, and some windows to watch the fish climbing the ladders. At the top of the fish ladder, the salmon enter a gathering pool where a mechanical arm sweeps them into the main hatchery. Their workers artificially spawn We'll go visit that. That's the sad part. I don't want to watch it. What is going on over here? The inside story. Here's a... Uh, these lights are bad in here. Comparing structure heights to Orville Dam. It's higher than all those. Almost as high as the Eiffel Tower. Cool. We like 3D pictures. Cross section of the dam. These little dioramas crack me up. Sorry about the glare. These lights are terrible. They're like can lights from the 80s. <laughs> and look, here's some salmon incubation eggs. Fry. Cute. Oh, yeah. Here's the dam. The new spillway. Well, the newly resurfaced spillway and the new emergency spillway there. That's what I mean. It's just yucky outside. Look at that sky. So, we're at the museum. Ooh, Yuba City flood of 1955. Pretty sure I have that picture in my, uh, video about Northern California floods. 
All right, let's go down and check out the rest of this museum. This is so cool. There's so many uh, animals and plants to find. Heron. They're just like in action right here. It's not there. Flying. Ooh, it's just yucky outside. Look at that. All right, so here's a little overview. This is supposedly like a Maidu native situation. So we have a Maidu boy here. That looks like his, his dad over there. The bushes hunting. I think we'll, we'll go down one side and back up the other. So, Manzanita bushes. Realistic. There's a hawk in the tree. Another one up there. Oh, he looks real. Up higher is a mountain lion sitting up on this bluff. See him there? Checking out the hawk. Maybe it's a golden eagle, I can't tell. This is a representation of a Maidu shelter house made out of bark. Have a little fire inside, your little mortar and pestle with some animal hides on the floor. Pretty basic shelter stuff here. So mom and daughter are over here attending to the salmon. I get a visit from some scrub jays. A mural of tiny my new village. This is a my new milling station. So this must be grandma working on the acorns and the baskets. realistic and super creepy but look she's making a cool basket she's got some reeds probably red bud soaking over there in that basket <laughs> there's a book last time I was in here I could swear I saw oh yeah look snake and everything. Now it's realistic. You guys watch my video about Ishii, right? Ishii. What a crazy story, Ishii. If you haven't watched it, go watch my video on Ishii. It's everything you want to know about the last of the Yana. Yeah, they have a nice little tribute to him. He was found in Oroville, so it makes sense that they would have a, a tribute to him.
here. There he is in all of his glory. Okay, over here we have more of, uh, let's see. This looks like, it says the Beckworth Trading Post. So this is like uh, the gold mining section, I guess, of this museum. Here we have a replica of a discouraged miner. Maybe he's just had too much to drink. There's a, I think that's a real photo. And it's uh, his cabin. And then in front, they've built a little creek bed where he would be working. They've even put some, I know the glare's bad, but they've put some little chunks of gold down there also. Cool. So James Beckworth is pretty cool. I want to do a video about him, tell his story. He's an interesting interesting dude so little trading post <laughs> cool you can buy a, a blanket or a pan bear traps baskets tea kettles There's some stuff you might have had if you were a early pioneer bidwell's mill Bidwell had a huge flour mill in Chico. Some implements. And this is a cardboard cutout of James Beckworth. And a quick story about him, but I want to make a video, so don't don't read too much about it. Because he's very interesting. Yeah, he had his own, his own uh, immigrant trail across the Sierra Nevada, and he came out in Oroville. So, interesting stuff. This old gold dredge, or a replica of one. Looks like a bucket line dredge. Right there, little buckets go in there, sort it out. This reflections are so bad, I'm so sorry. You can kind of see the lake out here. See way over there? That is stormy. If you guys are in Oroville, come check out the Kelly Ridge Lake Oroville visitor center. It's pretty great. It's free. Free is good. All right, that was fun. But now I'm going to drive down to the lake, check out the new boat ramp. Um, maybe a couple boat ramps. I don't know. Let's just go look at the lake now. So if you enjoyed the museum part, cool. Want to keep going? Go down the water. Stay tuned. All right, we're inside the Lilford Creek Recreation Area. I'm going down. We're going to check out the old boat ramp, and then we'll go over to the new one. How exciting. I'm excited. As you can see, it is yucky day off, which means less people. My wipers make the worst noise. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so there's the lake. Let's cruise down here since there's nobody here. Get a closer look. All right, we got our trusty windproof umbrella. The one that a viewer sent me from Washington State. Look at this. Look how high the water is. This is amazing. Even on a disgusting, yucky day. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I so can't wait to get the boat out, you guys. 
Look at that, the water's come up so fast, there's plants submerged. How cool. Across the way there, you can see the Bidwell Bar Suspension Bridge. Did a video about that. It's pretty interesting. Oops. I'm going to check out that video. It's the actual bridge they moved up from the canyon when they filled the lake. They saved the bridge. All the houseboats. Look at all this water going into the lake. Awesome. So, this house is up there. It's Kelly Ridge. That's Bidwell Bar Marina over there. And as we pan across the plethora of houseboats, that would be the main body, Lake Orville, looking up towards the North Fork. And the good thing about a stormy day like this is I don't have to worry about snakes just tripping over random lake stuff. I'm uh, thinking these are anchors for the moorage blocks. There's one over there. How cool. I think it might fill up this year, you guys. What? Yay, new boots. Waterproof. More tread than my tires. <laughs> you have. You can see how shallow the roots are on these giant pine trees. Look at that. Look how small the root ball is. That's it. All right, let's go up and check out a different spot on the lake. I guess I picked the right day to come out here. <laughs> Nobody. Just us. This is the new boat ramp. Wow, it's so high. It's so nice to see. You can see it's a little windy out here. I've got my new microphone going, so I hope you're not hearing any crackle noises. Alright, look at this. How cool is this, you guys? Some newer Christmas trees there. I like when the lake is high and I like when it's low. When it's low, you can see more of the geology. And when it's high, you can go back further up into the many arms. Cool. All right. Brand new boat ramp, you guys. Lake Orville.
right, we drove over to Foreman <laughs> That's why there's Foreman Creek State Recreation Area. Um, let's see how it looks over here. I can already tell by cars parked up here that it is high. Oh wow, look at that. You can usually drive out to what is now an island. This is more of a peninsula when the water is low. Looks like we can just make it to the parking area. Pop out of the car and take a look around. Well, we got a buoy or a boat bumper. So one thing when the water rises is all the debris that is now loose floating around. There you go, Foreman Creek. The sun is trying to pop out. I don't know if it will. Too bad I don't need one of those. It's the beauty of a aluminum boat. Wayward flip flop, garbage. Giant chunk of lumber. Could you imagine hitting that? That was out floating around. Thing's huge. Hey, look how much the water's come up. It's covering all those plants. Cool. Walk out to this point. In my new awesome boots. It's amazing how much tackle you can find when the lake is low. It's rare to find it when the lake is high. You see, it's just sprinkling a little bit. Wow, beautiful day. I like the clouds. I don't like it when it's 110 plus out here. A bunch of bluebirds flying around over here. Cute. You guys know I love me some birds. Check out that quartz crystal patch. Cannot wait to get the boat in the water and start exploring, said Crystal Patch. 
This is way easier to get to by boat. That little white dot down there is a floating campground here at Lake Oroville. I think there's like six of them. You correct me on that if I'm wrong, but something like that. Okay, now we are at the Oroville Dam launch. Let's check out the water level over here. Oh yeah, look, you can use the actual boat launch over here now. How cool is that? There's even extra water over there. How cool. This is a many lane boat ramp. Let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 or 12 lanes to choose from. Cool. Lots of water this year. That's exciting. Look at that. Imagine a nice, sunny, beautiful day. I'd say the water is definitely up to the spillway gates. Over there. So that's exciting, I guess. Being out here gets all my fishing and rock hounding exploring molecules acting up i can't wait for the sun to come out for springtime i'm not excited for summer but definitely spring um thanks for watching you guys thumbs up subscribe stay tuned hope you guys enjoyed this week's adventure to the museum and the lake um more to come so stay tuned and thank you zeb for all your awesome help and amazing support. Peace.